Now, welcome back. It's the nine o'clock block on a given Monday. This is Community Matters. We have a special a special panel for you here today. My co-host is Gene Fidel, who is my brother and an adjunct professor at NYU Law School. Hi, Gene. Say, say hi, smile. Good. Hello. Aloha. Good. Nice job. And <laughs> our special <laughs> guest is uh, Dawn Nguyen, and she's a financial planner. Um, she's, a, she's with Westpac Wealth Partners right here in Honolulu at 677 Ala Moana. Welcome to the show, Don. Hi. We're going to talk about retirement strategies today, Don. And we're going to talk about, uh, you know, how COVID has affected what might have been uh, your previous <laughs> retirement strategy. So can you give us a, a handle on, on how COVID has changed retirement strategies in general here now in the spring of 2021? Hi, Jay. Thank you for having me here today. I really um, appreciate the opportunity to share some information. Um, so in general, what we do is to help people plan ahead of time. It's always hard to, uh, it's good to be proactive and not, you know, to react to things. Like it's, if you don't have any plan ahead but, or before COVID happened, then obviously it's really hard to, uh, you know, you have to go into buy, uh, borrowing or max out your credit cards to pay for things. But if you did have a plan and uh, if you follow advice and, and be a little bit conservative and prudent, then it's possible that you could, you know, escape the COVID uh, financial disaster per se. But um, there's a not really like a magical plan that you should have. It's pretty much just the old thing, the same retirement accounts, uh, there's 401k plan that you could participate at work if they offer it to you. Um, you can max out your contribution, which is 19,500 for uh, populations that are 50 or under, or if you're over 50, then you could do a catch up of 6,500. There's also the Roth. If the company offer a Roth 401k you could contribute into, uh, people that cannot do 401k, they could open traditional IRA or Roth IRA. And so all these accounts help you save money for the future. And of course, when you invest in the market, there's potential you know, ups and downs, the volatility. Um, so you can't really do anything about the market per se with, with the interest and uh, the rising and the you know, up and down of the market, but you can increase your savings. Percentage of savings is only something that we talk about all the time. When you started out, um, you, my job, I do with a lot of young professionals who started out and they always like, well, what, what's the percentage of, if I should start saving? How much should I start save to save out of my income? I always recommend 15 to 20% savings and, um, you know, allocate them into different pockets of money. Uh, don't put everything in, no, no, all eggs in one basket will be not everything into the 401k, but not everything into investment or just. Don't leave everything in cash. So have a diversification. Diversification of portfolio would be uh, very helpful as well. And also have backup plans. Um, of course, you need to have emergency funds. So just in case you lost your job and you don't have, or you're waiting for unemployment, and the state has been taking a while for like for that not having unemployment benefits. So it makes sure you have a lot of savings. Uh, what we usually recommend at least six months to a year worth of expenses and savings. So that way you don't, you know, scramble when things happen and you're not sure where to pick the money out to pay for things, for expenses and whatnot. Um, but so for retirement, it's mostly long-term for a lot of people. So it depends on where you are in life. Uh, if you're near retirement, it might be a little bit hard. Right now, um, you have to probably be aggressive in contribution into your retirement plan. But if you're younger, then you'll have a little bit of time. Uh, but it will always advise in like, diversification in different asset class just because the market risk is really big but or having money just in real estate it could be pretty illiquid um mm -hmm. cash you you don't you can't catch up with inflation because you know the cost of things going up so yeah um, well i'd like to take you on a time time travel don okay let's go on a trip together jane okay. you can come along we're all going to go on a time travel here we're going to travel back to January 2020, okay? And far we have that uh, uh, far back, and 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 um, and we haven't forgotten anything that happened since January 20th, uh, January in 2020. We know it all. We know what followed. 
Okay. So if I was an Akamai investor, knowing everything that would follow January 2020, what would I do? What would you do if you knew about January 2020? Probably put as much money that you could as possible into savings. Um, <laughs> like I said, the diversification, put money in your retirement account, keeps a lot of savings, liquid money, um, increase your health insurance. If you, your company offer a HSA health savings uh, program, you have that in place. and. Just have a lot of savings just because you knew this is going to happen. You may lose your job and you're going to need to draw money out of somewhere. Um, you know, and I, I wouldn't recommend to put all the money into the 401k or the IRA because when you take those money out and under 59 and a half, then you have to pay penalties and, and taxes. So have money in non taxable accounts, maybe investment accounts or uh, just cash in the bank, or some people have whole life insurance and they take money out of that too. Um, but I, I, I can't really say what else. You have gold held. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll tell you if I if I knew what I know now, and I owned a restaurant in January 2020, I would sell the restaurant immediately <laughs> before before the rest of those guys caught on. Um, Gene, what what are your reactions to all of this? Well, a, a couple of things, just a funny story. I, uh, you know, hindsight is always 2020 or better, but uh, I remember just before uh, COVID hit, there was a, a sweet little house about eight doors up from us in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, that was for sale. There was an elderly woman who was living in it and it was a really a bargain price. It had the, the backyard fronted on the, Pusatonic River is a lovely spot. The house needs a lot of work, but I just decided, nah, you know, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this. Um, and uh, of course, now you cannot buy anything in Berkshire County, Massachusetts. Everything that was ever for sale has sold because of all the people that fled New York and Boston and so forth. Uh, that, that's just one thought. Uh, but I, I, an interesting question has occurred to me. Uh, we years ago had a financial advisor uh, who was a wonderful guy, and uh, he, he, we really had great confidence in him. One of the things that he urged us to do uh, was set aside a certain amount of cash. I'm talking about literal cash. I'm talking about $20 bills. And his nightmare scenario was that the ATM system would fail whether through hacking or, you know, whatever. Uh, and, you know, that struck us as a little strange. Um, but, you know, uh, does that make some sense? Uh, you know, just, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but enough to get you through, let's say, an outage, an ATM outage that might last a few weeks. Is it, are people doing that, Dawn? I, uh, I think it's hard to say. Like, I'm, uh, I think is the culturally, we don't really carry cash around or like save <laughs> a bunch of cash in the in the closet or, you know, I mean, I'm Asian actually, it's a bit different. We have a little bit different culture. I don't have cash in my wallet all the time, but I know people that carry thousands in the wallet and huh? just walking around, <laughs> yeah, hundred yeah. dollar bills. <laughs> um, so they do that, and it's, it's because I whether they just don't like using ATM cards or credit cards or, or whatever, they just like pay things with cash. So yeah, I think that that might be um, good to have uh, just in case something does happen, or you know, if it depends on where you live. You maybe if you're in an area where there's not a lot of technology and something happens, power outage, you cannot get cash right. out of your ATM machines and uh, the we're only going to accept cash and nothing else or, you know, or back in the, or if there's like apocalypse, and <laughs> so you can, you can right. only use cash to pay for things. But yeah, I think like to have maybe what he meant is just to be uh, planned for everything, just in case, like plan for the worst, which that is, I think <laughs> in my opinion, that's good planning because you never plan enough. You, you don't know what may happen. Like nobody knows the pandemic is going to happen. Nobody knows 
you know, an unemployment rate will be 30, 40 percent. So it's always good to kind mm -hmm. of think ahead and, and have that plan. Can what I, about, can what I about ask about a, just one other question? In, 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 in your uh, client base, uh, are people revising their estate plans? Are they writing new wills? Are they updating their wills? Yeah. Well, and I, I take it there's some, we all know people, uh, very sophisticated people, people with uh, real wealth accumulation who don't have a will, which is odd, but there it is. So uh, what are you seeing in terms of what, what people are actually doing on the ground there? Thank you. That's a very good question, and I I plan to cover that part as well. Estate okay. planning, estate planning is part of to have a well, a very well written financial strategy plan. Estate planning is part of it. Um, a lot of people think that in order to have that estate planning done, to have a will and a trust, you must have a lot of money. You have to be high net worth individual. In reality. That's not really true. Um, and the estate planning attorney told me that as long as you have $150,000 in your as your assets, then you should have a trust. Um, because, or if you have a property, you should have a trust because something happened to you and you don't have any will or trust. What is your family going to do? They don't know what you want your assets to, you know, how you want to divide your assets, and you don't want your family to suffer or like have this disagreement. Um, so definitely have uh and then usually when you have your trust or will done it's uh, recommended to be looked at every five years or so or like when you have something happen in your family somebody passed away or or if you had like a really severe uh medical conditions or if you add more properties or have more acquire more assets then that makes good to have them updated and um, so contact your estate planning attorney and have them look at the, the trust of the will for you uh, I always tell my clients to have the full estate planning done. So having a short will is definitely not enough. I mean, unless if you're like a 20, 30 year old and don't really have anything. But if you do have property, if you have more than $150,000, you should have a whole package of estate planning documents done. Um, it will be, your attorney will help you to set up a trust, a will, healthcare directive to let your family know what do with you if you know got the bit you in a coma cannot make a decision have attorney have all that done and you're right like after the pandemic and there's so so much death uh, around and you know everywhere over the world people start looking at their will and their trust and they're like okay maybe we should you know update just to keep things in place and make sure that if something just happened then your family wouldn't you know okay what we what should we do now and, um, get into that situation chaotic. Yeah. yeah so, are, are you are you doing a lot of um, rewrites of financial plans? In other words, are people coming to you now and saying, you know, I I really have to talk to a financial planner. Um, I I really have to take stock of this. I haven't been attentive, and and now um, I see how volatile things are or could be. Some people feel we're only entering volatility now. And it's going to get much more volatile. Some people feel that way. So the uh, question is, uh, are they coming around? Are they, are they talking to you? Are they saying, uh, 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 don't, I got I to gotta change my situation. I got to take stock of this. Are you giving new, new plans out to them? Sure. So um, we, I, during the pandemic, I call all my existing clients to make sure they're doing okay. And some people... It depends on what uh, what industry you're in. If you're, I, I think the essential business, you're you always you don't. Fortunately, you don't. You get to keep your job and keep uh, earning income. But some other industry, like the restaurants, um, you know, or hospitality, a lot of people are falling to hard times. So I would call them and ask them if they were doing okay, if they needed anything. Um, so for businesses, uh, the PPA loans and whatnot. Those help them as well, but a lot of people do want it to update their financial plans. Um, you know, have not just the the will, but protection planning. Um, so they start thinking about insurances. Uh, you know, what was going to happen if they passed away, and then savings wise, because um, the people that focus more on the long term saving, which is retirement, and put all the money into 
those retirement accounts, of course, if they are younger than uh, 59 and a half years old, like now they have they don't have any other savings, they start pulling those money out and paying taxes and penalty, that would be a waste of money, all your money that you're saving for. And you have to pull it out early because you don't have anything else, you know, before you go if you go through or you go through all your cash. So that's not really the financial planning. <laughs> so that's why <laughs> I would uh, always tell them like, also start like when we first met like have your reserves your emergency fund and then your middle bucket of money and then your retirement plan um your retirement so, account, then you don't have to pull out those money i okay. i have a i have a question that uh maybe you can shed some light on it has to do with cryptocurrency <laughs> uh there you know uh, there are people who have been uh gold bugs you know who want a physical asset uh, the precious metals of various kinds or diamonds uh and more you know in this digital era we have the cryptocurrency phenomenon has that generated any uh, interesting issues from the standpoint of the advice that you're asked for uh, by your clients uh, is it something that uh, has implications that have not yet been explored that should be so uh, our company, um, on the investment side of the company, we aren't supposed to, we are not, not yet, we're, it's, it's still not regulated and outside that we are not allowed to open any cryptocurrency account for clients. But if uh, somebody asked me, then I would, uh, you know, it depends on which, what, what kind of cryptocurrency and they're gonna have to do their own research to make sure that um, it is very volatile. I mean, I don't know if you follow that that yeah, point has been going pretty crazy. Um, but in the future, I think that is probably that is the future. So, you know, we are gonna grow and we're probably we're gonna evolve. We're not gonna be staying the same and, and using paper money anymore. That's probably will be in the future. We'll use digital currency. So, kind of bad thing to look into it. That's assuming that you make a. That's assuming that you make a note somewhere of your password. <laughs> <laughs> I hope yeah, you do. Yeah, so, so very so with those. are people? Are your clients actually investing in cryptocurrency? Uh, some do. I would say, like I, I some, some are not very sure because I, I have people who are aggressive in terms of investing, and some are a little bit more on the conservative side and risk averse. And cryptocurrency is a little bit on the risky side right now, so it's it's really hard um, for them. But you know, like whatever you're investing in, if you diversify and not like putting everything in one type of an investment, yeah, sure. it's always better. It's always safer to leverage your risk. But, but you have to have a concept, at least your own personal vision of, of you know the future volatility. And I wanted to ask Gene uh, his his feelings about future volatility. Um, and, and nobody wants to ever commit themselves on predicting future volatility, but what are your thoughts about it, Gene? Well, I, I think that, uh, un unfortunately, there are so many, <laughs> I don't want people to be jumping out the window when I say this, but there are so <laughs> many things uh, going on in the world that are quite concerning. And if like me, you believe there is actually a connection between like things that happen in the real world and what hap what the market does. Uh, uh, it could be very concerning, you know, whether it's uh, continued turmoil in our democratic institutions here, which, you know, that's another show, uh, or uh, foreign developments that are beyond our control, uh, a, a continued aggressiveness on the part of uh, China, for example. Uh, uh, you know, the, the pandemic, which uh, unfortunately we have no reason to believe has run its course, particularly in the third and fourth world. Uh, uh, there are uh, the, the rise of um, uh, disturbing autocracy uh, in Russia, uh, the persistence, I, I don't mean rise, let me change that. The persistence of autocracy in Russia, and it is an unfortunate fact that autocratic countries tend to be troublemakers and we are seeing that uh, right now and there's no reason to believe things are going to get better whether it's there or iran or pakistan or other sources of um, uh, uh, turbulence so 
I think there are good reasons for people to uh, give give serious thought to conservative approaches. Uh, this is not financial advice, I hasten to add. Uh, but you know, a an observer could uh, realistically say, "Gee, uh, things could really go into the tank." Uh, and you know, what you make of that is a matter of your age, your health, your personal circumstances, your uh, marital or family situation, and your other values. For example, uh, what is your position on philanthropy? You know, the, the, is there, are you going to set aside anything for philanthropy? Are you going to give it all to your children? What if your children or some of them are irresponsible or not of an age or disabled? You might have a disabled child, God forbid, it could happen. Uh, and uh, so uh, there's an enormous number of variables, uh, but the one thing that's not variable, I think, is that people have to give it their best, th their best thinking, find a, an advisor who has the uh, credentials and uh, the maturity and um, uh, uh, is able to give disinterested advice. Uh, that of course raises yet another issue, which is, do you go for a fee for a fee uh, uh, for financial advice and a percentage of your assets that are under advice, or uh, are you more in a trading uh, situation? And that's you know opinions vary on what makes most sense. Some investors are very capable; they're good at it uh, and are willing to take a hit of a certain uh, degree if that's the way things unfold. Others may be better served by uh, getting a professional, even though it may cost you some money out of pocket. Uh, and if your advisor is, uh, uh, is uh, smart, uh, the chances, they, what you're banking on is that your advisor, you will be better off with a, an advisor who charges a fee than if you or the advisor are merely trading stocks. That's, that's the the major choice that people have to confront, I think. Yeah, so Don, what are your fee structure? What is, what is your fee structure? How do you charge your client at, uh, at Westpac Wealth Partners? Um, so it's, it's gonna be based on the uh, type of accounts that we help them with. Well, usually I help with uh, setting up a some sort of, well, I, I usually ask them what they want to accomplish, uh, what person, what people want to do. Um, we offer full financial planning, but some people kind of come and just say, oh, well, I have this already with somebody else and I just want to focus on maybe an IRA account or some kind of investment account or insurance or whatever, um, you know, portion of the plan. Um, I usually recommend to do full financial planning, but it's people are different and you can't try to persuade them, but not everyone will listen to you. But it will be just based on um, these, based on the assets. To say if I take over a plan, it will be percentage of the assets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what Gene, Gene was talking about. Uh, you know, the, the one thing that's um, important is to um, make, what was your point? Get a good get a good advisor. Um, mm -hmm. But you know what? Um, the one thing that's really constant um, that rides throughout this is the fact that it's changing. It's dynamic. You cannot assume. That what you decide today is is going to continue in that way, and so uh, I, I don't think we should leave people with the assumption that you you go, you pivot, and you're done, all finished. You've made your you know your snapshot right. choice of, of new actions, and you're done, and you're finished, and and you don't you don't turn don't turn back on it. I well, think it's got it's got to be a dynamic, um, ever ever observant. The price of liberty, eternal vigilance, right? Right. Uh, but let me let me say this though. I think one thing that, uh, and I, I imagine Don uh, will agree, but if not, please correct me. I, I think it's quite important that the the interaction between the customer and the advisor be such that the customer is uh, not afraid to pick up the phone and say, you know, I'm feeling a little antsy this week, and uh, and just do a reality check. Uh, and uh, you know the, your advisor is going to be watching circumstances, conditions uh, carefully for you. That's one of the things that you're paying for. And it's there's 
you're not going to get charged more if you make a phone call and uh, you get five, 10 or 15 minutes or more of your advisor's time. And you should certainly be meeting periodically with your advisor. Maybe it's by Zoom in this uh, current environment, but that, that's, that should be part of the deal. And I think that's uh, industry practice now, industry standard. Yes, yeah. that's totally correct. We do quarterly review semi-annual annual reviews. I mean, I call my clients all the time and sometimes it depends on if they're like, oh, well, nothing has changed in the past three months or the, you know, then you don't need to update anything. But that is, uh, cook. client relationship is important. It's very important to us. And that's what I, I think that, um, you know, I offer to be able to help them talk to them on, on the phone if they need anything or any questions. Um, mm, yeah. and, yeah. and of course, yeah, that's, that's very part, healthy. That's part of the business model also, because right. uh, I'll speculate that uh, many of uh, Dunn's uh, firm's clients are referrals from other clients. And, you know, that's the way it is. That's the way it is in most professional services, actually. Uh, it's word of mouth. Uh, and a, if you have a satisfied customer, that customer is going to uh, mention it, uh, you know, on the golf course or at work or uh, in a social, you know, over dinner. And that's the way uh, firms thrive. It's a service business. And the guy who offers the best service is the one who has, who has the clients. I want to go into one other area before we close, you guys, and that is this. Um, you know, even before uh, COVID, we had a, call it a disparity of, uh, of wealth. Some people, they were landed and they had a lot of money in the bank and other people were homeless or had, you know, very little money in the bank. And, and that's kind of changed now. I mean, the, I think the middle class has taken a big hit. They've lost their jobs and businesses. Um, the people who invested in the stock market have done pretty well. It's almost, you want to tell me, Jane? 30, 35,000 today, almost 35,000. Right. And, and, you know, that's that's remarkable in a sense that here we are with all the challenges that you mentioned and the market still goes up. It's hard to, it's hard to find a connection there. Um, but, but so some people are, they've gained a lot of money. People in real estate, as you said, they gained a lot of money this year, not only in, uh, you know, in Connecticut or Massachusetts, but, you know, but, but here for sure. So, and then, you know, a lot of people lost their jobs. And, and despite, um, you know, the CARES Act and the Family Act and all that, they're still in the dumps. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering about disposition of assets. I'm wondering about whether health insurance, whether you, 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 if you don't have a job, how you get health insurance. I'm wondering about what you do with your retirement fund, pull it out or leave it sit and then not eat well. Um, life insurance, the cash in your life insurance. And you take out a reverse mortgage. Um, so where are we for people who are in trouble? Where are we for people who COVID has, has injured financially? And, and what, what is the discussion about what they do for health insurance and what they do with the assets they, they could liquidate? Well, that's a huge set of questions. Uh, uh, we, have, just, we have I'll, roughly 60 seconds for it. I'll, well, I'll, I'll quickly <laughs> squeeze in one fact, which is even though uh, the so-called Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act program, uh, has been controversial uh, uh, in, in Washington, it's not controversial throughout the country. It's a very popular program. Nobody, nobody wants to repeal Obamacare any more than they want to repeal Medicare uh, or Social Security. Uh, so yet at least some of this uh, has has come to rest, but uh, th there are uh, political dimensions to to uh, some of the options as well. You mean unpredictable dimensions? But let's well, assume. Uh, let's I, would, assume... I, I would say irrational dimensions in some respects. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Don, what do you think? Uh, what do I do for health insurance, and what do I do with the cash in my retirement fund, my life insurance, and in my house under uh, the possibility? of a reverse mortgage? So for health insurance wise, um, I agree with Jean. I, I think that Obamacare, even though it was a lot of controversial issues, it does help people in need when, uh, because you can fill out the application and they ask you for your your um, income and then they'll assist, assist you with a fund that you use to pay for the premium. So you have some there. I mean, I, I, it depends on 
family of how many people, three, four, five, or, or whatnot, where you get some help with that. Um, otherwise, you would have to, the state has this Medicaid uh, Quest program here in Hawaii that you may want to visit and uh, or call, give them a call and ask them questions. They also help with uh, low income families. Um, in terms of pulling funds out of your uh, either retirement account for, or cash value from life insurance, Whichever one that does not result in penalty and taxes, you want to take out first. Um, so cash value life insurance that you can borrow as a loan, no uh, no taxes, but retirement account. Depends on your age, that be tax from penalty um, if you are younger than 59 and, and a half. Uh, and of course, that's why it comes to planning ahead of time. I always recommend to have a lot of cash, I mean, some cash uh, reserves just in case it happens, um, you know, you whatever retirement account you liquidate, there might, there might be capital gains in the long term, it's been there over a year, short term that you have to pay taxes and income taxes. So again, have different type of investment accounts or assets class so you can liquidate in in times of need like this. So hopefully you don't Wait, Jean, has, Jean has a question. Let's, oh, let's stop there for a minute. No, no, no. No, it, it, it's, it's basically a, a footnote more than anything else. I think, uh, Two programs that uh, really everybody should uh, build into their uh, their thinking and planning are the social security uh, and how to maximize your social security benefits. Congress has provided that. The country uh, that's our social insurance uh, program, and uh, in my experience, the Social Security Administration staff is extremely helpful, user friendly. Maybe you have to be a little patient, but uh, that, that those are rights that people should uh, exercise and exercise them with, with some advice. I mean, there are some decisions that have to be made. The other is for people who have served in the armed forces, uh, the Veterans Administration, of course, administers a number of programs that can play an important role, particularly if you don't have a lot of other uh, uh, sources of uh, financial support. There are things that uh, can be taken care of. I mean, they, to, if you uh, uh, are eligible, the uh, veterans uh, medical care is uh, a very valuable benefit. And there are other benefits as well, including home ownership uh, assistance and so forth. Uh, so th some of these things, those two things are so obvious that you might not think of them, but they should be, if, if you're eligible, they definitely should be part of your uh, long range financial planning. Okay, we have only a minute left here. Uh, so, Joan, you keep can, saying is there anything? <laughs> well, it's an extensible minute. So, <laughs> Joan, do you want to talk more about uh, life insurance and reverse mortgages? Should I should I look at pulling cash out of those? Because I'm I'm not I'm not earning any money now. I'm digging into my savings, or I have uh, I've used my savings up. So, what about those possibilities for me? Yeah, there definitely those are uh, some options if you don't have any other resources. Um, life insurance has the cash value portion that you can borrow against as a loan. Um, so, but you want to talk to your advisor. Um, I mean, before you go into all of this, you may want to talk to your advisor to say, okay, what else do I have? Uh, what are my other options? But yeah, definitely life insurance. Is that you can borrow the cash value as a loan, uh, and there's an interest where you want to pay it. Otherwise, it's going to eat up into your death benefit. It will be reduced if uh, you were to pass away before paying back the loan. Um, reverse mortgage is also another option, but I also you want to discuss with your family before you do this because it will affect your children or you know whoever that will eventually inherit your your house or property. But it wouldn't, I, in my opinion, to uh, you know, it depends if you qualify or not. Of course, you have to be a certain age, and there's other things to consider. But it's not a bad option to do as well. Um, yeah, social security, though, you know, I, I think, yeah, you need to be qualified uh, in order to start drawing out the social security. And then if you do early, then you you kind of lose out. And some people want it to wait, but then if you don't have anything else, then I guess like what's the point of waiting? <laughs> but um yeah so, well i think you know it's an interesting time um to look at what you have uh, even if you've never had a financial plan before this would be a good time to look down the road mm -hmm. and everyone has a different view of the future uh, it, it may be fine the light at the end of the tunnel in august 
um, or it may be a real disaster for the country and the world. Uh, we don't know, but it's a good time to look at your situation. Don Nguyen, Jean Fidel, would you guys uh, please uh, say farewell to each other? And, uh, and then we'll close the show. Thank nice you. to be here. <laughs> nice to meet you, Don. Thank you, Jay. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Jean. Aloha. <laughs>